I've never seen this. The Tripper. I've never heard of this scary movie. The Arquette movie. A David Arquette movie. Could be good. Maybe. Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and since tomorrow is President's Day, we're looking at The Tripper, released in 2006. President's Day The movie. Tripper is a psychedelic stoner horror comedy that features a killer in a Ronald Reagan mask. Now, Nancy, you know young people today, no respect for anything. The target of his ire is a hippie-filled music festival that takes place in a Redwood State Park. The Tripper was directed, co-written, and co-produced by David Arquette, well known for the Scream huh. series and for being a one-time WCW World Heavyweight Champion. Oh, he also acts in The Tripper. <laughs> Wore a lot of Wait, man was WCW World Champion. Damn, what a title. And for being a one-time This is not This is not who I thought David Arquette was. I thought David Arquette was another guy. I don't even know who I was thinking of. But this is the guy from Scream. I'm it's WCW Dewey. World Heavyweight Champion. Oh, he also acts in The Tripper. Dude wore a lot of hats for this movie. Like, literally. Look at all these hats I found him wearing in behind the scenes stuff. How many hats you own, Adora. Dave? Answer, too many hats. The Tripper is a basic slasher that's very much of its time. Bro, it the, the switch up in hat styles, too. It's not like he's wearing the same, like, hat style. Like, most people would just stay rocking a dad hat or stay rocking a baseball cap or whatever. This man straight had the fedora on. To the fucking Peaky Blinders cap. Ass. The this Tripper is a crazy. basic slasher that's very that much of its time. Crazy. It came out during the torture porn boom and appropriately has a lot of blood. Hell, even its poster is an intentional nod to Saws. But I it's also. I was about to say, that looks oddly familiar. So steeped balls deep in the Bush era. George W.'s administration dominates the tone and <clears throat> themes of the movie, which ties all its early aughts anxiety back to Reaganism through its killer. And its title, since the Tripper is a riff on Reagan's nickname, The Gipper. You'd expect a movie of this caliber to only deal in stereotypes with shallow depictions of evil Wait, rednecks and burnt out they would call ronald reagan the gripper the gift and its title since the tripper is a riff on reagan's nickname the gipper you'd expect a movie of this caliber <laughs> Wait, he even said it right i should have just listened instead of trying to read it to only deal in stereotypes oh, with shallow depictions of evil rednecks and burnt out tree huggers those characters are present and accounted for to be sure i mean jason muse is in this thing but it also occasionally paints with a finer brush and explores the conflict between environmentalism and the jobs that run counter to it arquette said he opposed the policies of bush and reagan but that he wasn't trying to make some big polemic. He just uses them as a framing device for his silly horror comedy. I wanted to make a little political statement, not a big one. Listen, I'm not trying to make this out to be a great movie. It looks cheap, it's predictable, and the third act is a mushy, low-lit mess. It really stalls out when it goes through the motions of action sequences and slasher fare. But there is more thought put into this thing than you might initially expect. And besides, where else are you gonna hear Pee Wee Herman drop all these F-bombs? You motherfucking fucking fucks! Most importantly though, <laughs> this Herman. is a little known movie that I'm covering for a holiday. This channel was built on celebrating random holidays with cheap horror flicks. We can't forget our roots, now True. can we? Speaking of roots, what's that I see out there? Wait, who was that? Flicks. We can't forget our roots. Bro, why does that look kind of like Pedro? Roots, now can we? Speaking of roots. I kind of look like Pedro for a second. What roots? the fuck? What's that I see out there in the trees? Zorin? Yo, Zorin, what are you doing, man? Well, he's got oh, a flu uh, for Actually, I'm out here looking for a music festival because I hear that's where you get the really good Delta 8 THC. It's for me, not for not for him. But first, you D8. know, gotta find it. It's not here. Oh, no, dude, you don't need to be getting lost <clears throat> in the woods for that. All you need is today's sponsor, Vance Global. Oh, a cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Wait, how are you talking to me? Through the power of convenience. Now, with alternative cannabinoids like Delta-8 or THCO, some cop- What the fuck? They have their own pop? That's a Chelsea pop? Companies and a James A. Janice? What the- Don't put the necessary care into production, which can cause contamination or improper THC doses. So, it's important to make sure you know how safe the Delta-8 or THCO products you're using are. And Vance agrees. They even have a whole page detailing what to look for to make right. sure. Okay. True. Crazy. Initial and renewal orders on subscriptions. Great. Thanks, James. How do I get home? How much <laughs> blood will trickle down thanks to the Reaganator? Nobody knows. Let's find out and get to the kills. 
The movie begins with a quote. That's, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, right? Oh, nope, Ronald Reagan. That makes more sense. The opening credit sequence is filled with upsetting footage of violent death in foreign wars. That would have been familiar to a 2006 audience, but this footage ain't from Iraq. It's from Vietnam, because it's 1967 in California. That's when Ronald Reagan was governor of the Golden State, and he didn't care too much for the environmental movement. A tree's a tree. How many more do you need to look at? Plenty, according to these activists who are standing up to protect their giant wood. <laughs> a logger named Dylan Riggs begs a them tree to is a tree. so he can do his job and afford the medicine How many his alien need wife like needs. But this doofus, who awkwardly makes his stand, tells Dylan Riggs his wife ain't worth the wood. If your wife has to die to save these trees, so be it. That sets Riggs off, and things go from punchy to swingy to shooty. Shit! You can't be brandishing heat like that, logger man. Time to take a nice backseat drive to the station. Dylan's son watches the whole thing go down and takes revenge for his pop pop with a chainsaw. What? A motherfucking chainsaw? What? what? He the kid his ass raw. Oh damn! The kid is promptly arrested and sentenced to title card. Now we're in present day with a van like full five. of stoners driven by Jason Mew. <laughs> Snoochy boochies. He plays Joey, and he's taking this merry band of misfits to a music music festival in the forest. Since he's high as hell, he nearly crashes the van on the side of the road. Everyone Disney channels their way out the back and decide, hey, might as well pee. That's when Ivan here gets a bottle broken over his head, thrown by a pickup that paints the frame red. That's okay, nothing a little whiskey rinse can't fix. I'm Rambo. Sure, little buddy, you're Rambo. Rambo. Now, let your girlfriend Samantha sew this thing up. They stop at Yee Harbinger's gas station to pick up supplies and backstory. Through flashbacks, Stitches. we find out final girl Samantha has a controlling ex-boyfriend named Jimmy. Controlling and backhanding, damn, Jimmy sucks. He was pissed because Samantha and her friend Linda were tripping, backhand. which led to a disturbing Just Say No experience. Drugs are killing this fucking nation. Destroying your brain right out. I fucking love you! Yeah, Sam ain't been the right. same since, and Jimmy be paying for them unlimited tests. The bottle toss and truck pulls up, and it's unsurprisingly driven by these guys. What's the matter with you, dude? You got something stuck in your vagina? Yeah, your mama's dick. Among them is director David Arquette as Muff. That's that motherfucker right here with the bottle. Aw, what? Muff, <laughs> what would Dewey say? The burnouts and the good old boys have themselves a square off. Damn it, Sam, you're late for the square off again. You know we need those disarming kicks of yours. The end of the fight sees Muff get his arm completely fucked by some oh. random big guy named Gus. It Everyone runs shit. away, and Samantha leaves her phone behind. Hey, Gus, it's illegal to answer somebody else's calls. Or, wait, let's open their mail, huh? Eh, never mind. The festival they're going to, which lives among the trees, is run by Frank Baker, true patriot. This is America! Do whatever we please. Baker's played by Paul this Rubens, of course, and it's great to see him in a comedic role that's so different from Pee Wee Herman, who is perfect. He's navigating his business between the town's I mayor and its law it. enforcement. <laughs> Officer just, Buzz Hall, I don't played by see it Thomas at all. Jane, acting his ass off. Huh. Some people die okay. at a festival last year. Festivals, grocery stores, this guy can't escape death. Buzz oh, is concerned guy. about the festival's safety, citing a girl yeah, who disappeared last the... year. A flashback showing the incident. Yeah, the mist is one of the best like movies or not best one of my favorite movies i've seen it could have been better that whole mist like uh anthology not anthology like the whole mist world they made is crazy as fuck it's really cool i wish the movie would have gone into it more but i do like the movie for what it is the story of the mist though is fucking insane then lets us put it on the, the story couch. somehow her face got scared oh what the f the story and like the setting are insane if you ever read books lore shit like that in. Mayor Hal Burton says they don't know she's dead. Maybe she ran off to be a jam band groupie. She could be uh, following the fish. Nah, she ain't Mike's side or Paige's side. She underground, bruh. That's why Buzz want to buzz kill the festival. But Burton says it's providing too many jobs. He's also a fan of under the table money, 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 money. This money. was the first and only time David Arquette directed a feature film, but he was able to get a great cast thanks largely to personal connections. Thomas Jane was about to be his brother-in-law, having been engaged to David's sister Patricia since 2002. Paul Rubens and Arquette became close friends after they met on the set of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the Buffy. 1992 film, not the show. Mayor oh. Burton is played by Rick Overton, who had co-starred with Arquette in Eight-Legged Freaks, and Buzz's fellow officer Deputy Cooper is played by David's brother, Richmond Arquette. But oh, even the cast shit. members who didn't know- Yo, Arquette is in that movie. Oh damn, Eight-Legged Freaks, that is quite the sci-fi movie. Like, and by sci-fi I mean the channel. Like, that movie I associate with sci-fi channels, so 
<laughs> so frequently. Marquette said he was a fun director who ran a relaxed set. That includes English actor Marsha Thomason, who was hired days before shooting, and who would go on to do 12 episodes of Lost. Hell yeah! The gang arrives at the Free Love Festival, a great place to drink, do drugs, have sex, I'm assuming say be right back. Be right back! Their trip nearly ends before it starts when a felled tree almost crushes their van, cut down by that old wily coot Dylan Riggs. These rainbows? This ain't their goddamn forest cut. Damn it. Buzz tells the logger to buzz off, but the cop ain't got love for all these stoners either. Every year, four or five of you kids get killed up here. Driving yourselves into redwoods or get paralyzed sucking on nitrous or blow yourselves up cooking meth. Thomas Jane didn't need to go this hard, but he did. He ain't too good for your movie. Buzz and Deputy Cooper aren't used to a wild festival like this, full of drugs and naked, naked hippies. I love how the movie sticks with the naked dude after he and his gal split up. We follow him and his ginger bush until he's caught by a trap and, oh God, drag dick first across the crowd. <laughs> Samantha and her that friends aren't hanging dog, stable. they're just hanging out at an abandoned mining tunnel to underline the environmental themes. An old hippie comes across like them. A wrong Can I say he's pretty cool? Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> All right, dude's pretty cool. Cool. That was like a like a wrong turn moment. It felt like. That was, that was and those something. trucker fuckers who show up and start throwing rocks like they were bullies in a Stephen King story. After everyone runs off, the camera lingers on the cool old hippie, Dog. so you know he' about to die. Another dead giveaway is the square-shouldered figure who appears behind him and chops off his head. That's usually a good sign your character's dead too. Let's check back in with the rest of the cast. I would if I could. I fuck myself every day. Silly. Oh, crazy. Silly. Boy. Okay, Jason Mewes is doing his <laughs> usual shtick. So Samantha and Ivan step bro. away to smooch by a babbling brook. She admits that she's nervous about all the drugs around. Maybe because of the bad trip she had caused by Jimmy. Or maybe because her crew is rolling like this for fear and loathing. Ivan tells her he won't trip out of solidarity. Like a whole but listen, sheet. I know guys like this. That dude about to be tripping the first chance he gets. The tripper like benefits from sheet. two strong actors bro, as you see that thing? Jamie King You're was crazy. one of the best parts of both the Silent Night and My Bloody Valentine remakes. And Lucas Haas, another close personal friend of our cats, is so talented, he performs a little song he wrote called Kemp. She danced like a wicked angel. It's actually pretty good. It's been stuck in my head all week. The next day in these beautiful mountains, a not so beautiful scene is found. The nude guy's dead body, hung up on a tree oh, in a vicinity. Wait, his stomach. Buzz hanging out like that Scream 4 kill. Yeah, his guts are just a. The only clue dangling. Buzz finds is a jelly bean. <laughs> A magic jelly bean. It can become a world. A world in which Buzz has shut down the roads going into the forest, pissing off Mayor Burton because he all about that business. Jelly beans are a staple of Ronald Reagan lore. After using them to quit smoking, he became a jelly belly boy for life. Ate them everywhere and even had a quote about judging a person's character by how they ate jelly beans, which made its way into this movie. What? The next day things get underway, but Samantha can't enjoy herself. She's been <laughs> seeing her ex-boyfriend Jimmy in her sleep and possibly driving around here at the festival. Judging. The rest of her friends are having a blast huh. though, sucking on a balloon full of nitrous. The soundtrack gets the wah-wahs as they pass it around. Whoa. Ronald Reagan was figuring out people just by the way they ate jelly beans. That is an interesting. Oh. Then they take some ecstasy <laughs> and trip out oh. with a bunch of colors. Ivan joins in, told ya, and gets worried Samantha's gonna know. Well, that looks fucked up. Nah, you good, man. Arquette was inspired to have a music festival horror movie while attending Reggae on the River in Humboldt County. He wanted to capture the feeling of festivals like this, and he does. This setting feels authentic. The movie was filmed in the Big Basin Redwood State Park in Santa Cruz, California. They unwisely shot in the winter, meaning they had to deal with lots of random rain. Oof. Everyone was telling me not to do it at this time, and... And, you know, to a certain extent, they were right. Buzz visits Dylan Riggs and asks if he set the trap that killed the nudist. Riggs said he didn't kill anybody. He just hates hippies because they took away his wife and son. Government's got laws that help corporations and activists. Yeah, but who's out there looking out for the little man? Again, the dialogue isn't the most polished thing in the world, but it's interesting to right. hear this populist perspective back when neoconservatism was more dominant on the right. Arquette credits co-writer Joe Harris, who had written Darkness Falls, with turning his, quote, rambling thoughts into a more structured screenplay with political savvy. Linda and Joey tee -hee into the trees for woodsy grab ass, and on some private land, Joey finds enough weed to put him in slow motion. Probably an <laughs> indica then, huh? They celebrate with they sexy times and a bushism. You have just found a weapon of mass destruction. Jason Mewes was excited to act in his first horror movie. She pretty much played <laughs> the same character in all my movies, which is Jay. Dude, that would be cool. So, 
this is a little different. I mean, fair enough. Can't say I agree with him there, though. Joey is just J with an extra letter. The truckers are also walking around in the woods. <laughs> right. My mom has good tits. You gotta it would be that. cool to be in a scary movie, fuck, though. Muff? This ain't Milf Manor. Armed with paintball guns, they open fire Even if on you Joey get killed, and Linda. It'd be when did sick. this become Friday 6? Well, I guess since there's been a killer in the woods. Muff Especially if you have a good kill. Gets his neck snapped. The other two truckers wind up fighting Joey and chasing Linda. The killer interjects himself into the boy fight. What the fuck's your problem, man? Then he takes his axe and disposes <laughs> of Joey the and the trucker <laughs> just off screen. What the, the guy chasing fuck Linda is your gets problem, caught in the bear trap, man? And the killer ends his hunting trip by stabbing him in the dick? What? Oh, okay, looks a little higher at this angle. We finally get a good look at the Reagan killer when he chases down Linda. Looks like it's a mask since she almost tears it away. But she fails worse than Mondale and gets it's killed like instead. Tourist trap. First with some stomach stabs and then with some chiding. You know, young people today, no respect for anything. And look at that, the blood won't even stick to that Teflon knife. There's a long line to get into the actual music festival, and not even Wes Craven gets to skip it. I love his cameo in that stupid hat. Is that they discover a body hanging from a tree. Huh. Since it's headless, Buzz is gonna have a hard time identifying it. Oh wait, never mind. it was the old dude. Buzz shuts down the show and tells the attendees to clear out and go home. I love the long shot of the big bird guy being turned away. Back to the nest with oh, you. The, the concert biggest cancellation bird. causes a panic in the playhouse. What in the goddamn Name of Judas, you think you're doing? Calm down, PW. Fuck you. Fuck you. Right. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Careful, man. I think that's today's secret word. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Secret word. Baker decides to have Let's some music go. anyway, giving us a performance by Fishbone. A ska song doesn't exactly fit the Bush era aesthetic. Third Wave had long died down by 2006, but Party at Ground Zero is always good to hear. And I guess the title does tie it to the era. Buzz shuts them down, probably mistaking them for cherry popping daddies, and once again tells the crowd to fuck off. But he can't expect to win a fuck fight against Baker. Fuck you. Uh -huh. hmm? Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. The word of the day keeps going. Me. No, I was talking to somebody in the other room. This time, the target of Baker's <laughs> F-bombs is Mayor Burton, but I'm he's so soon pulled away from the phone. <laughs> With the concert shut down, more people leave. I do. I don't. I still don't see the... Not Mr. Bean. I still don't see the, the Pee Wee Herman thing, but I can't hear it when he says, fuck you. <laughs> that shit's Friends great. Friends because Joey's got the keys, and he ain't around to give them a hand. Sober Sam's the only one who can see that things are serious. Ivan and her other friends are all still out of their minds. She suspects that Jimmy is behind right. these murders, and finds his car during a very brief rainstorm. It's clear skies again when she gets back to the van, where she finds her friends Jack and Jade dead in the nude. They have the Nancy Reagan slogan, just say no, written on them in blood. These two were the third couple of the group, and were basically always fucking. Kinda like Paz de la Huerta's character in Boardwalk Empire. Ivan appears, as does a gun pointed straight at his neck. It's Jimmy! Sam was right, he did follow Jimmy. her here. Although he didn't kill her friends. What makes you think I could kill somebody? Because you have a gun! Huh. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> Jimmy gets attacked yeah, okay. by the Gipper, and it don't well, matter what his voting record point. is. But I'm a Republican. The great discombobulator hacks into Jimmy's chest and kills him with many a blood splash. Ivan squares up with Dutch to give Sam more time to run, but he's quickly killed in a weirdly shot, disappointing way. Well, there you <laughs> the go again. That, that quote comes from the 1980 <laughs> presidential debate after Strobe Jimmy Carter light brought killer. up problems with the healthcare industry. Oh, there you go again. <laughs> Yeah, real good zinger, dude. The cops rightfully suspect that Dylan Riggs has something to do with the murders. Turns out they're right. They find him cutting up bodies with a saw in his shed. You ain't gonna take my boy again! A shootout commences and Dylan runs away, but after a short Wait, chase so with Buzz Reagan? in pursuit, the logger falls to his death in a trap of his own making. I'm assuming a trap like this one is what killed that previous year's concert goer. Even though the festival is officially shut down, the party moves into the forest for a drum circle. Yes, the tripper, please give us more psychedelic sequences and fewer chase scenes and fights with people rolling around in the woods. <laughs> the movie's much better when it's doing shit like this, capturing the trippy experience of festivals like Electric Forest. Samantha becomes an unwilling participant when she's shot in the face with an acid gun, which gives the movie another opportunity to go wild with colors and editing. Oh I tried to make stuff like this in college. The key word there is try. The party's <laughs> over when Ronnie arrives. Wait. He starts axing people like they were air Reagan's traffic back. controllers on uh -oh. strike. This scene is super dark and there are a lot of axe swipes that land off screen, but I counted nine distinct victims, including this one dude who gets his leg Wait, cut Chuck, off. He got, got his out. leg off. At Dylan Riggs's place, Buzz finds a shrine to number 40. A 
Amidst all the Reagan memorabilia is an article about how he shut down mental institutions, releasing thousands of inmates. Now, this did happen in real life, but most of the inmates wound up being homeless and harmless, not murderers, like what's happened here with Dylan Riggs' son. Gus Riggs was locked up after chainsawing that activist, but released due to the cuts in mental health funding. He grew up to be that guy we saw in a single scene like an hour ago, when he was played by Christopher Allen Nelson. Oh. Nelson is the Tripper's effects oh. artist, responsible Crazy. for all the good looking gore. He also Ooh. dons the Reagan mask and plays the killer throughout the film. I got a call out of the blue, I was sitting at home. So I just called him up, I said, Chris, can you do impersonations? He's like, yeah. You want to play the killer in this movie? <laughs> it's like, hell oh, yeah. 15 years later, Nelson's hell at the yeah. top of his game, having done the effects for David Gordon Green's Halloween trilogy, oh. which he also acted in as a cop in Halloween 2018. This movie's cop finds the mayor face full of glass, but still alive. He hasn't yet been killed by the rampaging Reagan, who takes his tax cutting to Frank Baker. Baker flees and manages peewee. to hide from the killer, but at what cost, Frank? You'll uh. never smell good again. While Gus is chasing well, down more the... to kill, his dogs get oh. a victim of he went under. He through the gates to finish off Mayor Hal Burton. I mean, if he's alive, the, he, the dogs mean, then run off and if find he's alive, another victim, he's alive. A random festival goer whom they mauled to death. Deputy Cooper and some troopers shoot the floofers, upsetting an animal-loving oh. hippie played by Courtney Cox in a cameo. These are God's creatures. She's attacked by the dogs, but the cops save her with more gunfire. <laughs> Cox was Arquette's wife at the time, and a credited producer of the film. The, the two fuck? of them essentially self nah. this thing, and David made sure- They brought the dog back just to bite her. <laughs> okay. Was ready for a 420 right. release date. Reagan returns to Samantha so we can have our requisite final girl circuit. That's pretty standard. She runs through foggy woods with big film light shining behind the trees, and comes across the corpses of her murdered friends. You know, all the staples. With the effects of the drugs still lingering, this is one unfortunate experience for Sam. Buzz comes to the rescue and holds Reagan slash Gus at gunpoint. Is this what you call compassionate conservatism, boy? He shoots the killer down, and things seem pretty chill until, wait, what? Why is Sam grabbing the gun and putting it to her head? The drugs? Like, I guess. Gone, this gives Gus the chance up. to come back and run for a second term. And while he and Buzz wrestle around, Sam comes to her senses and grabs the gun. Or, no, never mind. She doesn't grab the gun that just fell to the ground. She grabs a hammer. That's what she uses to take down Mr. Reagan. Damn, don't break his butt. She's breaking his butt. And his <laughs> face, holy shit. Oh, Inkly wishes, am I right? As Lucas Haas's song plays over the soundtrack, Buzz unmasks the Reagan killer and reveals Gus's face. Our cat must have picked up the wrong lesson from Screams 2 and 3, that was one anticlimactic unmasking. The next morning, Rude. a trio of bodies are seen, which I'll go ahead and count. Not sure if they were among the victims in the dark, but they seem new enough to me. Frank Baker isn't among them. He survived, <laughs> looking like he did the poop cocktail. At Hot what cost, style. man? Buzz learns that Gus's body wasn't found next to the mask, but thankfully, the killer isn't coming after Sam again. He is going after Frank Baker, who's trying to escape no. with his uh, big stack of ones. Big baller. Gus oh, tracks wow. him down and gives us one final kill. A horrific oh. one, since he chainsaws Baker and half vertically. Holy shit. The movie ends with Frank's money polluting the beautiful oh, Pee didn't even make How it. How many people wish the nation would have gone the way of Minnesota? Let's find out. Brother we'll went to the, the porta potty just to fucking lose. Me? By my count, 29 people died in the tripper. The victims consisted <laughs> of 23 men and 6 women. I love how he always puts like, uh, like, if somebody loses something, you can see it. Oh, wait, you can even see the guy who is drugged by... Yep. <laughs> the man's leg gun. Women giving us a blue electoral pie that Ronald Reagan wouldn't recognize. With a runtime of 97 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 3.34 minutes. I'm giving the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Frank Baker. The Just when you think he can get on his bike and crazy, ride away to even safety, with the blur. he's stopped by the killer coming back for one last scare. And it is a gory finish. Hey, you almost said if Relame is killed, that definitely goes to Ivan. For a main character, his death was blink and you miss it bad. And that's it. The yeah. Tripper came out on April 20th, 2006. Doesn't seem like that silver award is justified. That shit is disgusting. It made a big splash, but I am proud of our cat for writing and directing a movie. That is not an easy thing to do. We'll be back to True. Scream on Friday, but until man went from Scream to straight making his own movie. That is actually crazy. Till then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been the Kill Count. Thanks. All right. Well, that was nice. That was an interesting movie. I've never seen that. It was pretty fun though. A bunch of interesting. It was like an interesting cast.